a este servicio de, de adoración de esta mañana. Can you hear me now? Okay. 
Uh, me regocijo estar aquí en esta mañana con nuestros amigos y vecinos que nos han venido, que son parte de nuestra familia de la Iglesia Río de Dios. I rejoice to be here in this morning and alongside our, uh, our siblings and our family from uh, our Iglesia Cristiana Río de Dios, uh, which is another Disciples of Christ uh, congregation in our community. Este servicio de hoy eh, no va a estar completamente en traducción de español al inglés, pero vamos a estar en la presencia del Señor eh, esperando y abriendo nuestros corazones para recibir el mensaje de Dios y lo que Él nos quiera uh, decir con su palabra hoy. This uh, worship today is not going to be fully bilingual in English and Spanish and everything translated, but we hope that we can open our hearts and our minds to receive the Word of God and experience God's Um, wisdom in the way that the Holy Spirit is going to be uh, moving through us today in this congregation. De esa forma les digo que si, eh, como nosotros los discípulos de Cristo, siempre tenemos um, un momento donde participamos en la comunión y ofrecemos la comunión, eh, por favor tengan sus sus copas listas para que puedan participar en ese momento. Our Disciples of Christ, one of the ways that we share together as a community is we share um, our elements and we have communion in portion of the service. So please make sure you have your cup ready with you so when that is the time uh, you have it available. And if you're at home, please make sure that you have your elements ready with you, uh, something like a bread or a cup, so you can share our communion time together. Preparémonos. Preparémonos para recibir al Dios Todopoderoso y alabarlo y glorificarlo. Let us prepare in mind and spirit to receive the God and to Say thank you and blessings for all the things that we have received. Let us get ready for worship. Hello, good morning everybody, welcome, uh, buenos días a todos, uh, well, mi inglés no es muy bueno, but it's okay, uh, God is good for, for every, everybody, uh, vamos a alabar al Señor y va a ser una pequeña oración para comenzar y traer la presencia del Señor, amen. Señor Jesús, te damos gracias, Padre, nuevamente, Señor, por otro día más de vida, Padre. Gracias, Padre, porque estamos aquí, Señor, reunidos, Señor, como cuerpo, Señor, como hijos tuyos, Señor, como congregación, Señor. Te damos las gracias, Padre, por otro día más de vida, Padre, porque tú nos das la vida todo, cada día, Señor, y nos levantas, Señor. Gracias, Padre, por, <coughs> por esta congregación, Señor, de aquí, Señor, y la, y la de nosotros, de Hughesboro, Padre. Sabemos, Padre, que tú te mueves, Señor, en todo, en todo lugar, Señor. Tú estás, Señor, en todas partes, Señor. Este, queremos gozarnos, Señor, hoy en este día, Padre. Te pedimos, Señor, tu presencia, Señor, que tú te muevas, Señor, en este lugar, Señor. Que tú te goces, Señor, que, que esta alabanza, Señor, que llegue hasta ti, Señor, como ese perfume grato, Señor. Padre, este, úsame, Señor, para dirigir esta alabanza, Señor. Y, Padre, si, si te hemos fallado, Señor, en la semana, Señor, te pedimos perdón, Señor. Hoy venimos, Señor, con un corazón, Señor, humillado ante ti, Señor, para que nos, nos perdones, Señor, y, y poder, Señor, entrar en intimidad contigo, Señor. Padre, este, <coughs> recibe la alabanza, Señor, y la adoración, Señor, porque solo, Señor, para eso fuimos creados, Señor, para la, la alabanza y la adoración, Señor. Bendice, Señor, a cada familia, Señor, a cada niño, Señor, desde el más chico hasta el más grande, Señor. Espíritu Santo, eres bienvenido, Señor. Muévete, Señor, en este lugar, Señor. Gracias, Padre, te damos en tu santo nombre, Señor. Amén, Señor. Si me acompañan con sus palmas, vamos a darle la alabanza y la adoración al Señor. Amén.
tan hermoso eres Jesús son tus palabras es tu amor tan glorioso eres Jesús es tu poder fue tu cruz la que me salvó Let us pray. Because Christ transforms our hearts, they overflow with his love, peace, and joy. We must sing of his beauty, glory, and power. Because he saves us, we give him glory. Because he rescued us, we give him glory. Because he freed us, we give him glory our King forever. 
We bless the Lord from the dawn of our first day to the dusk of our last day until we bless him on that day for all eternity. 10,000 years isn't enough. 10,000 reasons just scratches the surface. Amen. Oh.
morning. Morning. Buenos dias. <laughs> um, we are coming to the time of offering. And um, I have a lot to read. And I think that they, they gave out flyers in, in uh, Spanish and English. So you could follow along. This Sunday and next are our special offering for reconciliation ministry. Today's offering will be different. Instead of our usual offering, we are only asking for gifts today for the reconciliation special offering. We'll pool these gifts and send them together with a note to the general church. Secondly, instead of bringing the gifts from the back, um, as Murray Hill, Hill usually does, sorry, I got a page turn. Uh, we're inviting folks to bring their special offerings gifts forward to the trays that are on the table. The deacons will release rows and cue you forward. Um, and probably, I'm guessing, from the back? From the front. From the front. Okay. Um, but, and deacons, kind of raise your hands. Okay, so these are our deacons, and they will let you know um, which, when your row comes up. Okay, and uh, let's see. And now we're going to go to the flyer that you have uh, that pastors Bernice and Troy revised uh, to make it specific for our region. We have it in both English and Spanish. So here it goes. Wildfires, flooding, inten intense heating of the earth, and the tensions between her people demonstrate how the whole of creation is groaning for the revealing of the beloved of God. As God's beloved, we inhabit the breath of the divine, giving us the same power and authority to connect that which has been separated. Reconciliation ministry strengthens our capacity to be remembered, reconnected, and restored as God's beloved. Reconciliation ministry began in the disciples in 1967. The Reconciliation Fund supports anti-racism and pro-reconciling ministries of the Christian Church, or Disciples of Christ. Disciples receive the special reconciliation offering each year in September and October. Half of the funds received in the Oregon and Southwest Idaho Disciples Congregations will be used here in this regional church. The other half will go to general church reconciliation ministries. In March 2022, your gener generous giving to the reconciliation ministry helped fund the Kirkpatrick Lecture Series in the Disciples of Christ Historical Society at Phillips Theological Seminary in Tulsa. Currently, our region's anti-racism pro-reconciliation team is sponsoring a pro program called Tulsa Talks, based on a major conference planning planned this spring. The conference involved numerous presentations on the history of racism, anti-racism, and racial ethnic ministries within the Disciples of Christ. The next session for the Tulsa Talks will be online Wednesday, October 12th. Look for the sign-up. Uses of our local funds have included anti-racism and pro-reconciliation training for church leaders, supporting Yakima Christian Mission in White Swan, Washington, and legal advice on immigration issues, to mention a few. Other uses support local congregational projects, such as Pacific Island Christian Churches. They are currently collecting food, 
and hygiene items to send a container to the Micronesian islands to combat the combined effects of climate change, the pandemic, and inflation. So will, oh, I see it's over here. Will the deacons please release the, the rows from front to back? Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Holy One, we bring these gifts given from our hearts to go out into your world to help heal, reconnect, and restore us to each other and to you and your world. Bless them, multiply them, for we know that with you, all things are possible. Forward to be seated here or, and or here for a children's message. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you, whether you're here or at home. Um, I have a question for you. Can you look around this room and see if everybody has the same hair color? Can you check on that for me? Everybody have the same hair color? Okay, now you might have to squint a little bit. Look to the people to your left and right and see if they have the same eye color. See, check and see if you have the same eye color with, with people. Do people have the same eye color? Okay, next question. Do people have the same skin color? Take a look around. Do people have the same skin color? Maybe not? Okay, is everybody here a boy? Is everybody here a girl? Is everybody here the same height? How about the same age? No, God made us all different, and those differences are very good. 
our Bible story tells us that even though those differences are good, sometimes people can use those differences in bad ways. For instance, imagine you're in line for lunch at school, and the teacher says, from now on, only curly-headed, red-haired girls with blue eyes, they're always going to be at the front of the line. How does that sound? And they're going to get extra food. And the only person that has curly hair and red, curly red hair and blue eyes is the teacher's daughter. What do you think about that? That doesn't sound right, does it? And then the teacher says, and the twins will always be at the back of the line forever. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? Well, why would anybody do that, right? So the, what, what um, this story is telling us is that when people use those divisions to divide us, it's like putting walls up between us. And Jesus came to break down all those walls so that we could be together again and enjoy our differences. So remembering that God made us different and those differences are good, let's have a prayer. God, we are so grateful that you have made these children and all of your children across this world different. And those differences are good. We ask you to give these children and all of us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and hands to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 14 to 20. There's English y Espanol right there. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Here ends our reading. May God bless our hearing, understanding, and living of these words. Welcome to members of Rio de Dios Discipulos de Cristo. My special thanks to Pastor Bernice Centron for help with today's message, both in content and translation. Since we're talking about churches, journey with me to Dublin, Ireland. St. Patrick's Grey Cathedral hides an interior that's bright and beautiful, colorful, and inspiring. 
walking up the central aisle's decorated tile floors, we turn left and find this. It's a dingy, drab, dark wooden door hanging by itself. It looks completely out of place. Yet this door tells a story. In the late 1400s, two powerful families were vying for positions of authority. In 1477, a royal appointment was given to one, leading the other family to dismay. Over 15 years, that dismay nursed a grudge that led to open warfare. Swords were drawn, blood was spilt outside the city's medieval walls. The losing family fled to the cathedral, seeking sanctuary within, claiming the ancient law that ensured they couldn't be harmed, slamming the heavy oak doors behind them. They heard their pursuers gather outside. They argued, shouting through the door for hours. The head of the family outside called for a truce, promising that if they opened the door, they wouldn't be attacked. Those inside feared treachery and refused. The head of the family called for an axe and battered the oak planks until a section gave way. He then stretched out his right arm through the opening, offering his hand in peace. This action gave rise to the Irish expression, to chance your arm, meaning something risky, dangerous, and possibly unsuccessful. Divided families, bloodshed, and a hand stretched out in peace have something in common with our reading. One doesn't have to look too far to see dissensions and divisions in our world. Cast our eyes 5,600 miles northeast where Ukrainian troops battle Russian invaders. Glance 4,000 miles southeast to Venezuela where a country's economic collapse sent refugees seeking asylum. Closer to home, sociologists note that Americans are moving to political enclaves more suited to their ideology. Red states are getting redder. Blue states are getting bluer. And purple places are vanishing. Five rural Oregon counties want to secede from this state and join Idaho. Nearby Portland's crime rate is 1.6 times higher than the U.S. average. 2021 nationally was the second highest year for gun sales, exceeded only by 2020's sales. There are 393 million guns in civilian hands, 120 firearms for every 100 citizens. A recent YouGov poll indicated 43% of Americans believe that civil war is somewhat likely in the next decade. These examples obscure but do not eliminate the systemic violence of economic exploitation as rich and poor become further divided, or as white supremacy battles against a multiracial democracy, 
or as patriarchy fights against women's bodily autonomy and self-determination, or choose your conflict. There are plenty to go around. Dissensions and divisions run the gamut locally to globally. Paul was well acquainted with conflict. The apostle was no stranger to struggle, for he lived in the blood-soaked Roman Empire. Prior to Paul's conversion, he instigated conflict against Christians whom he despised. As a missionary, he encountered it among people opposed to his message in towns and cities. As a church planter in Corinth, he addressed it in his letter to a squabbling congregation. The Corinthian church, like others he founded, had its share of challenges. These challenges are revealed in verse 14's from a human point of view, which in Greek reads, according to the flesh. Flesh is a term Paul uses to describe a life out of alignment with God's purposes. Paul contrasts flesh to spirit, the latter being a life aligned with God's purposes. Galatians 5, 19 to 21 lists the works of the flesh. More than 50% include conflict, such as enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, and envy. A human point of view necessarily divides us. A life according to the flesh fragments the wholeness that God intends. The apostle knew of conflict. Paul was no stranger to struggle. Those in Christ know a different story. Paul calls it the message of reconciliation. He says, we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. On the cross, Jesus put to death all human divisions that divide us. On the cross, Jesus put to death all fleshly fallacies that fragment us. On the cross, Jesus put to death all dividing walls of hostility among humanity. On the cross, Jesus put to death all worldly wisdom that says discord and dissent are our predetermined destiny. Yet this is just half, and not even the better half, of that message of reconciliation that Paul proclaims. Or you see, something better happened after the crucifixion. On Easter morning, Jesus rose to create one new humanity in the Spirit. On Easter morning, Jesus rose to reconcile all groups to God in one body. On Easter morning, Jesus rose to proclaim peace to all who were near or far off. On Easter morning, Jesus rose to inaugurate the dawn of a new creation, a cosmic resetting of the world to God's purposes no longer misaligned. Henceforth from the resurrection forward, a new era was underway. For Paul, this was an accomplished fact, an objective reality brought about 
by God's raising Jesus from the tomb. As magnificent as this message of reconciliation is, Paul says a mystery was revealed that would have remained hidden without the resurrection. That is, through Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Notice Paul doesn't say, through Christ, God was reconciling the church to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. This makes perfect sense because we in the church know we're forgiven. We know that. Forgiveness of sins makes life possible, makes new futures available, makes new hope realizable. But that's not what Paul says here. He says through Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Our message to the world is that God keeps no record of their sins. They are gone, obliterated, erased. Our message is that God is no angry deity out to get even with a world that has rejected the divine presence. Our God said from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His love urges us on, for he was sent by the Father not to condemn the world, but to save it. God has made peace with the world. This is our message of reconciliation. Since God has reconciled the world already, there are implications for our actions. The new era inaugurated by Christ demands his church not only deliver that message, but demonstrate its reality. The indicative, the accomplished fact of God's reconciliation demands an imperative response from us. Be reconciled. This is what Paul calls the ministry of reconciliation. To minister is to serve, and to serve is to act. The reconciling work of God through Jesus continues through his church, not just in word, but also deed. We no longer live for ourselves Since our sins are forgiven and Jesus has put to death all human divisions, we are freed to live and freed to love others unselfishly. As 1 John says, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. As Cornell West says, justice is what love looks like in public. We are entrusted ambassadors for Christ. Paul uses the image of an ambassador to evoke this ministry of reconciliation. Ambassadors in the ancient world represented another country, culture, and king, and had to be bilingual and bicultural. They were powerful messengers who spoke on behalf of their country, 
humble servants whose authority was delegated by their king and entrusted representatives of another kingdom and way of life. We are those through whom God is making his appeal through us in treating others on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. As ambassadors of reconciliation, the words we speak aren't our own, but God's own. The entreaties we offer to others aren't on our behalf, but Christ's behalf. To be reconciled isn't only the words we speak, but the life we lead. Since God has reconciled the world already, we as church not only deliver that message, but demonstrate its reality. The accomplished fact of God's reconciliation demands we be reconciled. The message and ministry of reconciliation captured the imagination and empowered the actions of our founders. Barton Stone invited Baptist, Presbyterians, and Methodists to worship together at Cane Ridge, Kentucky. 30,000 showed up, not just to hear the same message of free salvation urged upon all by faith and repentance, but to embody that by sharing communion together. Thomas and Alexander Campbell left Northern Ireland because of church divisions hoping for a fresh start in America, yet finding even greater divisions here. According to the Christian standard, the first relations of Campbell and Stone appear to have been somewhat strained and not altogether cordial. Each had doubts and concerns about the other's beliefs and practices. It's doubtful the leaders themselves would have ever gotten together if it had not been for the groundswell of union sentiment from their followers. The leaders weren't averse to union, but there was a certain aloofness which was never entirely overcome. Of the two, Stone was more amenable to union And so he chanced his arm on January 1st, 1832, extending his right hand to Campbell's representative, Raccoon John Smith. It was risky, dangerous, yet Smith reciprocated and the two movements united, reconciled to work together for the healing of Christ church. That message and ministry of reconciliation from 200 years ago continues to capture our imagination and empower our actions today. Consider our identity statement. We are disciples of Christ. A movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. Movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. Reconciliation in a world riven by dissension. One of our identity principles states, we hear a special calling to make visible the unity of all Christians, proclaiming that in our diversity, we belong to one another because we commonly belong to Christ. 
we are not just proclaiming reconciliation. We are working to make it visible. From a handshake in 1832, we have worked to answer that special calling. In 1910, we established the Council on Christian Unity, the first denomination in the world to have an organization devoted to such. We organize the National and World Council of Churches. We led the consultation on church union, are in official dialogue with the Roman Catholic Church on full visible unity, and established Christian churches together with Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, Evangelicals, and Pentecostals for a common witness in America. Since 1967, we've worked with the United Church of Christ in overseas mission, and in 1989, we chanced our arm again with a formal partnership with, with, with them. In 2019, we chanced our arm again with a formal partnership with the United Church of Canada. We don't just proclaim reconciliation. We work to make it visible globally, nationally, and regionally. Our region's anti-racism pro-reconciliation team is chancing its arm by sponsoring Tulsa Talks on the history of racism and racial ethnic ministries among disciples who are Asian American and Pacific, Hispanic, Native American, and African American. In addition, we have a number of church leaders who are trained in leading this difficult and necessary work, chancing their arms too. We chance our arms supporting Yakima Christian Mission among Native Americans and offering legal advice on immigration issues. We chance our arm by extending it with fellow Chukis disciples to help fill a container with food and hygiene items for families in Micronesia. Reconciliation is risky and dangerous. The cornered Irish family saw their pursuer wrist his arm through the door. They shook hands, emerged from hiding, and made peace. It took an axe to breach the separating door, known now as the Door of Reconciliation. It took a cross to break down the dividing walls of hostility between humanity. Jesus chanced his life for reconciliation, peace, and wholeness. What will you do? Amen. And I invite you to stand as you're willing and able and sing our communion hymn. Change my heart, O oh God. Got everybody?
be seated. This is a time when we come to commune with each other and to commune with Jesus and with God and um, to gather and let the Spirit move among us as we drink of the cup and eat of the bread. So I would like to um, offer a prayer um, for before we start. So let us bow our heads. Beloved, though our world is different in many ways than when Jesus walked among us so many years ago, yet it is very much the same. We still have darkness and brokenness in our world, and fear, and violence. But we also hold close the hope you sent us in Jesus. Renew us, nourish us, guide us, Jesus. Love and teach us again each day to have the love the hope, and the courage to truly live as you showed us. And this will help in the reconciling of each other and your world. In Jesus' name, amen. Porque el Señor Jesús invitó a todos a la mesa, todos están invitados a participar. Porque yo recibí del Señor lo que también he enseñado, que el Señor Jesús, partiendo el pan, la noche que fue entregado, tomó el pan y lo partió. Y habiendo dado gracias, lo partió. Y dijo, tomate, Comet, este es mi cuerpo que por vosotros fue partido. Haced esto en memoria de mí. Comemos el pan. We take the break now. Asimismo, tomó también la copa después de haber cenado, diciendo, esta copa es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre. Haced esto todas las veces que bebieres y comieres de esta pan. Así también las veces que comieras de este pan y bebieras de esta copa, la muerte de Jesucristo hasta que Él venga. Llevamos entonces de la copa. Oremos el Padre Nuestro todos al unísono. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a tu reino, 
hágase tu voluntad como en el cielo, también en la tierra. El pan nuestro de cada día, danos hoy. Y perdona nuestras deudas, como también nosotros perdonamos a nuestros seguidores. No nos dejes caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Somos uno en Cristo. For this opportunity, Pastor Bernice, we are so thrilled to be able to share communion, to share worship, to share our Lord together in one place at one time. If you could please translate that, I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to give you a microphone. There you go. Estamos agradecidos por tener la oportunidad de poder compartir no solamente el servicio de adoración, pero también el evento de comunión con todos ustedes. Y estamos muy agradecidos que ustedes están aquí presentes. What, what you don't know behind the scenes is that this is the fruit of a conversation that has been going on for about a year, about a year. Now, let them know. They know that. Lo que no saben es que esto ha sido resultado de una conversación que hemos tenido alrededor de un año ahora. Para que ustedes vinieran acá. And more... And most importantly, this is step one in building connections and relationships between two sister congregations and look forward to more opportunities. Y lo más importante es que este es el primer paso para eh, desarrollar una relación entre las dos congregaciones que estamos para servir juntos. Thank you. Mm, not necessarily, but okay. Okay, yes, we're doing announcements. The women's, the regional women's uh, retreat is being held here in just two weeks on, on Friday evening and Saturday, October 7th and 8th. And I want Bernice to be sure and tell members of her congregation about this too. We would like you to register sooner rather than later. There's food involved in this, and they like to get that arranged ahead of time. Y la próxima sábado, 
tenemos una bendición para los animales aquí. <laughs> La próxima sábado, um, hasta 10 a uh, 12. No, no 12. Yes, 11 a 12. Sí, right. I had to think about it for a minute. It's been a while since I've done Spanish. Um, I'm going to give our blessing, and then we're going to have it sung out in a, in a form uh, familiar to uh, Rio de Dios. Uh, I don't know if there is someone. Is it just it's you guys? It's us. Um, so here's the blessing in English. You'll hear this, a form of it in Spanish. You can stand up. We're so thankful. God bless you and protect you. May his grace always support you. His angel watching o'er you, shelter everywhere for you. Thank mm-hmm. you.